Hey everyone and welcome to Almost Cancelled. I am Peter, that is Tara, and we are going to talk about The Righteous Gemstones Season 1, Episode 7. It is called, And Yet One of You is a Devil. So full spoilers for the episode, as always. And that's, that's not the first time Gemstones has had a, a mouthful of a title. There's been, there's been a few of them that have been a bit on the longer side. I, I feel like they're, they're taking from scripture and repurposing them. Right. Or it just sounds like somebody... Something someone on a televangelist channel would say True. on top I, of the stage. I yeah. feel like they regurgitate the same material. They must do. They've been going at it for decades. Decades. Since, since the dawn of TV, or at least cable TV. Mm -hmm. I know. It's like they're all working from one book. <laughs> they're all plagiarizing <laughs> from the one source. <laughs> That's, that's good that's good all right so this episode features the plan coming into action because scotty is in inside we start the episode with a flashback and i didn't realize right away it was a flashback i thought gideon was leaving again i was like is gideon running away again oh no it's just the, the flashback to how they got the footage in the first place that makes sense mm -hmm. makes sense um debatable if we needed it i don't know if the, the scene told us a whole lot uh, in and of itself uh you know i like the episode the rest of the episode's great i just i don't know if we needed the opening flashback it kind of felt like yeah okay so getting placed the phone um, there i think it answered some questions that we had about how the footage got like got to them and uh that you know jesse was basically becoming an asshole and to his own family and that's why his son left also we kind of knew that though i, I feel like like, I mean, you say it answered questions, but did we really have those questions? Were, were we really thinking about, oh, how did they get that footage? I mean, I thought, oh, he recorded it on his own cell phone, so Gideon was there. <laughs> I didn't know Gideon was there. Yeah. I, I guess it just all makes sense to me. I didn't really feel like I, I needed the scene. I mean, it's, it's not a big deal. It's, it's, you know, it's a two-minute scene at the start of the episode. Uh, it was pretty funny. <laughs> There's some humor in there. There's a couple of, I mean, this isn't as hilarious as last week's episode, but there's a couple of standout lines uh, that I'll mention when we get there. Um, and of course, Judy does does belong to one of them. And it's not even just one line, it's got a little run of lane she has at one point. Uh, yeah, she's fantastic. With, with her father, with Eli. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, Easter's coming up, and a big part of the plot, uh, outside of, of course, Scotty wanting to steal the money and Gideon kind of, like, you know, doing that with him, is, of course, Easter service and the fact that this is their biggest televised event of the year. I, I'd have thought Christmas, but I guess Easter's bigger. And No, Easter's the big one. Easter's the big Not to me, it was always well, just... Well, I guess Christmas and Easter are the big ones for American Christians. <laughs> like, people who don't go to church always go to church on Christmas and Easter. I mean, I don't go to church in either of those days. <laughs> people who are Christian. <laughs> oh, people who are Christian and go to church. Okay, that's, that's, a, that's an important qualifier. <laughs> Correct. Oh, Didn't dear. know it had to be stated. Uh, do you know what I do on Easter? I don't know, because I never know when Easter is. I just kind of hear about it sort of loosely after the fact. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, when I was a kid, we used to do, like, egg hunting or candy hunting <laughs> now i got a couple of easter eggs as in chocolate easter eggs and ate those and that was a bit it was just a chocolate time that was all it was one year i got a thing of legos that changed everything for me because once you start getting toys for easter <laughs> Then it's like, oh, Easter is just Christmas again. It's Christmas too. Okay. Yeah, that never happened for me. Also, can I just say how cute it is that Americans say Legos, plural? That's really funny to me. Oh. Did you... <laughs> do you not say Legos? No, we just say Lego. It's singular. It's singular is also plural. It's Lego. Mm -hmm. It's all Lego. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's something Americans say, and it's not just something I say. Oh, no, it is. No, I've noticed it before. Around. No, I've noticed it before. Uh, so... Don't, don't worry, you're not alone. It is, it is the entire country that is wrong, not just you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. At least the entire country is on my side. And we have nukes. So. Is that a threat? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so we are right. <laughs> anyway, so Easter service is coming up and they all get their jobs. Uh, and Judy is delighted because Eli says, you know what, I've been wrong, I've been stubborn. Uh, you have talent and I've hid you from the world. I want you to perform with, uh, you know, Baby Billy on Easter service. 
Uh, I want you to do it when the collection plates are going round. He's like, the collection plates? Just, just like Mama used to do. Oh. And she gets all blubbery and she's hugging him. Uh, Kelvin gets the same job he always gets. So he's like, oh, it's the same thing I always do. And then Jesse gets a new thing. He's like, you're going to give the main sermon. You're going to be the, the main star of the whole thing. And he's all happy and delighted. So then again, Kelvin's in the middle just like, yeah, yeah, you, you got that. And then you got that. And I got the same thing I do every every year. Yeah. Mm. Judy's like, yeah, Jesse and I got good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> now, my favorite part is at the end, when, after Eli walks away and it's cutting away from the scene, it, it, it cuts back to the statue or the, the, the bust of the mother again. And you just hear, like, Judy's already said, I get the collection place, mom. She says it again, but it's, it's inaudible. You can't, you can't hear it, but she's like, I get the collection yeah, place, mom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. yeah this actress is so good whatever she does next i'm on board yeah she goes to baby billy and i was sensing that there was going to be a dispute here about whether or not they should actually do the show because billy just kind of ignores it and is like oh whatever um and of course judy really tries to reiterate hey this is great this is we could be on tv we can do all this uh and bj tries to stick out for her and you know, actually, you know what? This episode did something for me that's not happened yet. Is that it made me sign and feel sympathy for BJ <laughs> in a way that I hadn't up until this point. Because in this scene, yeah. when Baby Billy says, "Who is this little boy? Get rid of him! Tell him to get the f out of here!" Uh, and Judy just says, "Yeah, get the f out of here, uh, BJ. You're embarrassing to me." And I'm like, "Okay, that was cold. I love, I love you, Judy, but that was cold." Yeah, she's been really abusive to him like verbally abusive and sometimes maybe a little physically a little, but not realizing that she is what do you mean a little physically a she slapped him in the deck last week <laughs> <laughs> well i mean who knows there's there's a line there that might be you know still um playful <laughs> anyway you're right judy is the worst but also the best also the best but yeah, yeah she's clearly the worst to bj but yeah. also like, it, the reason you feel for it is because when she makes these comments this time like yeah get out of here and um you know judy's just trying to do what everybody else who she respects is is like telling her to do but you can tell she doesn't really want to say it yeah and well, she it, thinks that she can get away with it because she gets away with everything. But the, well, this is the thing, though. Here's, here's the key detail. It really to point does out. hurt him. Like you can see in his eyes, and he like he feels betrayed. Like he's trying to stand up for her, and she's not standing up for him. But here's the key detail that's different from normal: is that up until this point, she always sticks up for him in front of other people. She's always done that with the rest of the family. The only time she's been a dick to him before is when it's they're on their own. Now, admittedly. <laughs> would would that be preferable to me if I'm putting myself in that position? Would I feel happy in this relationship where she protect defends me in front of everyone else but treats me like absolute shit in person or you know in in, in privacy? But here mm -hmm. she she doesn't stick up for him. She she sides with Baby Billy, who by the way, you know, like I think last week we were like, oh maybe Baby Billy's not such a bad guy. He does recognize her talent. He is a complete monster in this scene. Uh, I think I think the line that really stuck out to me is you belong to Uncle Baby Billy now. Oh, I don't recall that, but yeah, that's. Oh, he's yeah. Pretty, I, uh, it's pretty low. Yeah, I noted that line because it was really harsh. And then later on, of course, she's a dick to him again in the dressing room. Um, and you know, it's because because he comes in and says, "Oh, how are you feeling? Are you feeling okay?" And he's like, "Don't don't add to my stress." Like, I was trying to see if you're okay. Oh, is that what you said? Are you feeling okay? And I'm like, Jesus, Judy. Now, of course, we've we've glossed over her best scene in the episode, which is when she has to tell Eli on the morning of Easter Sunday that that she can't do the show and you know he's like oh i was wrong to trust you and and she's like I, i'm a i'm a grown woman now dad's like yeah you're nearly 40. <laughs> yeah dad that's what grown woman means i wear <laughs> big girl panties the kind where the string goes at my butt crack <laughs> now, hold, so before you before you continue right see when she said that that was a hilarious line and i was ready to start laughing i was almost i was like in the middle of almost <laughs> laughing at that line and then she immediately followed it up with so she says i wear big girl panties where the string goes up my crack i have tits and i do sex <laughs> <laughs> yep winner winner <laughs> <coughs> There's a time in every young woman's life where she has to tell her father that she has tits and that she does sex. And she does, she do sex. She, she do sex. <laughs> Not have sex, she do sex. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. It was the same thing actually in the scene with Billy. Uh, at one point he said, uh, 
a uh, man and then he says the plural but instead of saying men he says mans and again it was just this little thing that just made the delivery perfect <laughs> Just really, it was, it was perfect for the character. So, of course, BJ runs off, and they, they effectively split up here, where she throws the ring at his little car door, because uh, he's got this little tiny car. Um, and it's kind of sad. And it's like, okay, maybe maybe they'll reunite yeah. by the end of the season, but for now, this touching twosome has, has divided. I know. I don't want to see them part ways, but yeah. I'm glad that he's out of that horrible relationship. Yes, yes, very abusive relationship, which was doing nothing for him. <laughs> um, also, I love how he casually dropped as well. He's like, like, I'm not even religious and I'm here to support yeah, you. Yeah, you're right. I didn't even, <laughs> I didn't realize that about his character. <laughs> well, there was hints back in like, episode one or two. Remember when uh, Kelvin was like, or maybe it was Jesse, when they were speaking to their father, he's like, oh, I saw him on Facebook. He supports abortions <laughs> or something like that. Like, there was, there was like, a little hint oh, that you're right. they'd seen yeah. something. But we didn't know if it was true. It's we true. Just... He's, been, he's been the voice of progression of the wokeness yes. of the way the world's going absolutely so you know so that, that was kind of judy's plot and of course uh gideon's plot is that you know scotty comes in at the start of the episode as, as it was teased at the end of the last one and we have this scene where he's at the dinner table with the with the gemstone family not, I mean, not the whole family just you know jesse's family um and they're they're having dinner and there's some great moments in here where scotty because he's a stunt obviously that he's still a stunt man in this this you know cover story if you will uh mm -hmm. and he's like oh yeah i've had tons of things i've been shot i've been stabbed i've even been run over by a car and you know there's <laughs> just this thing where we're dynamic brain just kind of staring at us like try to piece it's like you seem familiar uh, it's almost like i've seen you somewhere and there's like this big moment of tension he's like oh i was on a recurring role in csi in miami he's like no nah, that's not uh that's something i don't think that's it i don't like shows where people solve things <laughs> <laughs> Which is funny because that's his. That's what his story's been all season. Like, in fact, just last week he was doing the get your get your head out the clouds and start dusting for prints. That was that was him last week, right? <laughs> so what I love about that joke though is I love that that joke is funnier because of everything we've had so far. Like on its own in this scene, it's okay, but with the with the backstory of the last six episodes, it's it's really funny. It's really solid. So. You know, yeah that's why that's why i think comedy works better on tv than it does in movies in, t in terms of like just a pure comedy because i think comedy yeah. on tv gets to build jokes and build running things o over the course of time that's true but some of the best comedies like i've watched on repeat <laughs> throughout the years and i can still put on for a good laugh and we don't really get a lot of those good ones anymore we don't do we get any what are the good ones like airplane um, oh, I thought the you meant Science Theater three thousand movie. <laughs> I, th no, I thought you meant we don't get many good ones anymore. I thought you were going to name it the few good ones that we had recently, <laughs> not not uh, the airplane I think from the nineteen eighty. The last one that I really laughed a lot at was probably the the Jumanji reboot. Okay, I didn't see that. That but... was pretty funny. <laughs> Most of my favorite comedies tend to be mixed with other things, which is kind of true for this as well. Actually, it's kind of mixed with like more of a an actual crime story. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, I suppose it has more full on comedy than some of the other stuff that i like but... oh yeah no this is more than just comedy yeah but, you <laughs> this know, has a lot of layers in it. but i look at my favorite comedies it's, it's hot fuzz it's ghostbusters it's, it's all stuff that's mixed with other genres as opposed to i don't know what's the comedy all the kids like or did like super bad yeah that's okay not for me yeah i'm not really a big fan of like apatow films yeah. or apatow adjacent films <laughs> yeah and paul feig <laughs> It doesn't know how to direct a comedy and never probably will anyway <laughs> so but what's, what's great about this is that like the jokes land and they keep moving and like the the story keeps unfolding through the jokes whereas I, you know i brought up paul feig there one of his problems is that he doesn't know how when to end a joke he'll just let the joke like be repeated 10 times uh, or write jokes i mean because usually he just has his actors improvise mm -hmm. until something is funny to him or he has them dance <laughs> on set so that's why half that new ghostbusters was just them dancing in the base because i didn't even see it just keep going just keep dancing don't, don't bother with a script or witty jokes or it and just keep dancing anyway so this shows very way and one of my favorite gags actually because obviously some gideon and scotty are planning uh and you know the, the, the job and there's a scene on the yacht where 
Like Jess says, I'll be your father, Scotty, if you have no father, if your father's in prison. Because he tells him a sob story about his his backstory. And Scotty's like, you're know, doing the tongue sort of like over his shoulder at Gideon. Sort of like, ha ha. Uh, yeah. This is actually my favorite part of the of the show. Oh, really? Because of Jesse's speech to his family about how he's finally going to make it. Mm. Cause, uh, because Eli is giving him the opportunity to, to, to give the Easter sermon, the main sermon. And... <laughs> And he's he's going to like each one of his kids about how how big of a moment this is for their mm. family, and then says Pontius, I know you don't give a. <laughs> and Pontius is like, nope. <laughs> well, my favorite part of it is even Seth. He just kind of shrugs. He goes like, eh. <laughs> 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 um, anyway, yeah, that was good. That's probably my favorite moment. But I actually really like that whole scene. Actually, at one point, didn't Amber like say like "Mother F and praise Jesus" or something? Like that. They started dropping f bombs in the middle yeah, of all their like that, yeah. all, all their Jesus praising, which was you know, uh, very. I dare say the phrase "white trash," but <laughs> it felt very white trash to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was a little Talladega Nights. Mm-hmm. Uh, but um, there's a scene so just before Jesse's gone on to do his sermon right so we see like clips of like Kelvin doing his thing uh, only really great Keith moment of the whole episode is it cuts to Keith uh, like, at the edge of the crowd like sort of like cheering him on and doing some dance mm-hmm. moves um, being proud, you get proud. another pretty good Keith moment at the end oh there's a little moment you're right you're right but this was the one that this is the first one that kind of cracked me up uh, was him mm-hmm. just kind of like you know there he root him on like there he chillied, chillied for his buddy you know uh, who may may not be his spiritual like soulmate, um, so. <laughs> but Jesse's going on, and Gideon's like, "Oh, I have to tell you something." He's like, "He's going to confess. He's going to confess about the you know, about Scotty, about the crimes, about everything." And it's like, "No, I think I know what you're going to tell me. Nothing gets past me." <laughs> and as soon as he started talking, I'm like, "He thinks he's gay. That's where this joke is yeah, going." Yeah, so I thought that too. <laughs> right, and that's okay. Like, I think I think Big Braid sells it that it makes the joke funny on just as it is, right? But it's not like an amazing mm-hmm. joke on its own. The bit that nailed this, the bit that made it funny, is like, it's like no, "I still love you, so I still love you." You know, it's a beat. So are you the main one, or are you the one that takes it? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, no, don't tell me. Steep question. Don't know why I asked it. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear that, that, that was funny but of course uh, Gideon makes a choice to change his mind he's going along with the plan up to a point and sort of teasing like, is he doing it is he not is he going to steal the money but he shows up without the money in the elevator where, where Scotty's waiting and they have a bit of a fight but of course as this is all playing out uh, Jesse's given the sermon and he's he's given a whole speech about Judas about the betrayal of Jesus um, my favourite part of all this of course was the shadow puppets on <laughs> On the on behind oh them. Oh my god, they were a lot, yeah. Yeah, it was like they made a bunny. Like there's like four people who make a bunny, and then they start doing other things. It's like, but if I have something that really the image that really conjures you, it says Jesus Christ on the cross, and you just have this big prop come up, the shadow of the big cross. Mm-hmm. Uh, very extravagant, very amusing. Uh, but you know, like you know, Gideon holds his own. He gets the the phone back that has the footage on it, and he he fights fights Scotty back. But obviously, we're not expect. A, there's two episodes left, so there's going to be more plot. And B, we're not expecting Scotty to take this down. Uh, you know, sitting down to take this lightly. Mm-hmm. And of course, Scotty shows up that night. He comes out, and of course, him and the security guard at the, the front gate are like buddies now, because he's he's telling the, the guy to like get into shape. Oh, you could be a stunt man. You could be a star. Yeah, he's uh, been buttering him up. Yeah. Uh, and he's been seen the security guard's seen him with the family like, oh yeah. for the last couple of days presumably so he's like yeah go on you're welcome here yeah I actually thought what was going to happen is he was going to try and come in and the guards were going no no Gideon told me not like yeah and, and then like, he was going to get frustrated and then it would be next episode where we see him like sort of fight back some way but no he gets waved well, on in Gideon didn't think ahead yeah before before the attack happens though there's a scene where Diane McBride, Jesse's like up on the kitchen counter. Like he's like it's not even like he's just hanging off the kitchen counter, like you know, like I might do from time to time. His kitchen counter is no. big enough that he is completely on the counter and his feet aren't even dangling off the end. He's just he's completely lying, posing on the counter, and they're yeah. just they're popping like grapes Eating or, something. or something. Oh yeah, it's chocolate, maybe, yeah. I it was either I, I thought it was like small fruit, but it might be chocolate, you're right. Uh, but they were just popping food. And he's like, you know, I heard people say that you were as good as dad. I even heard a few people say I was better. I believe it, honey. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, he said something along the lines of uh, how how you know it's just people who just want to suck up to the pastor or something like that. And she 
He's like, you know, you know the type. <laughs> and his wife's just like, oh, yeah, I know the type, honey. But you, she really sells it because we've been watching her suck up to her husband the entire show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So she's been doing it presumably for like 18 years at that, least. This is one of these scenes where there's no punchline. <laughs> like, there's no punchline in the scene that actually makes it funny. Mm-hmm. It's just the general kind of, like, the way the actors are giving the performance back and forth that makes it amusing. Uh, yeah. So that's really We good. haven't really spoken a whole lot about her. Is it Amber is the name? Amber, yeah. She is, she is really, really good as well. She's really, and she really... has a pretty interesting little reveal also right after this when she goes to bed and she puts her her gun from her purse away which is like this little itty bitty thing into this like giant <laughs> like mr and mrs smith style yeah closet full of weapons of course you say that i say jane's uh bunk from firefly but that's fine uh, <laughs> uh, but i don't speak joss whedon joss whedon you say <laughs> he created the hit television show buff of the vampire slayer you're not supposed to do that on this one how I could do it every one. In HBO. No. <laughs> you can't say HBO. that. Joss Whedon's got a HBO show coming. You can't say that. Well, hold it in. He's got the Nevers <laughs> coming. for that. He's got the Nevers coming. Um, wait, is Carl going to try and like, get out of that by saying, oh, Tara's a HBO person now that I don't have to do a Joss Whedon show? <laughs> is that what's going to happen? I don't want to do a Joss Whedon show. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> Make Connor do it. <laughs> we'll discuss this later. <laughs> the pair of you'll be sat down and we'll, we'll have a discussion about this it'll be like eli telling the kids what who's doing what um <laughs> how dare you how dare you can actually... i just do the kids show <laughs> <laughs> i'll be kelvin do what i always do <laughs> you'll be giving the main sermon you'll be interested in the show quite frankly yeah, <laughs> yeah. Actually, I'm going to make a promise right now. The Gemstones finale, Tara's going to intro the show. Oh, yeah. That's our season finale special. Tara's going to host and intro it. You think I'm ready? Yeah. I, I wasn't you're... expecting this moment. I think you're ready. I think you're ready. I'll even swap sides. I'll even put me in that side and I'll put you in this side of the screen for the video version. Ooh, that's really going to trip me up. <laughs> In fact, really. I, probably, I, I probably watch myself in anyway. <laughs> I probably won't just because I won't remember to do a version of the overlay where my Twitter's on the other side and I'll be like, I can't be arsed doing it, so we'll just stay on the same sides. But Tara's going to host the final episode. It's going to happen. So, uh, Gideon's in though and Jesse's all like, oh, don't worry, I never told your mother about uh, our special talk today. That's for you to announce. That's your beautiful announcement. And she's like, Be- oh, announcement? What's this? Like, oh, no, nah, mom, really, it's not like... Like no, Dad, that you misunderstood. <laughs> oh, so you're bi? Like what? No, no, I'm not. I'm not. Bi. I love my bi son. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's. I think it's been pretty cool to see. Um, to see, Jesse's character go from, like, hating Gideon to constantly telling him that he loves him and he loves his family. And oh, I think it's because he's defeated the bad guy, or so he thinks, and he's you know, gone so far up on the chain for the family business sure, that he's sure. just he's on a high. He's feeling good. And he loves everything. He loves but, life. Well, let me ask you this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a bit of analysis out of you. Why do you think that is? Why do you think at this moment he is at his happiest and he's his closest with Gideon that he's been all season? Maybe because he feels like he's on top of the world? No, no. What I mean is, why, why now? In, in terms of writing the whole story, why is now the time where they're at their happiest and why oh. his relationship is closest? For the betrayal. Because we are about to have the betrayal, yes. We're going to have <laughs> Scotty come in right after this and sneak in and, you know, pistol whip. Because he was very excited about pistol whipping people earlier and Gideon had to talk him out of it. He's like, no, 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 no pistol whipping. Not enough with the pistol mm-hmm. whipping. Um, but they have to go to Eli. And this was the scene that really hurt. It, was, uh, it didn't really feel that bad when it was like when it was Jesse that he had to, like, the gun up to. The, but see, when they went to Eli and he, like, he pistol whipped Eli, and. Yeah, that hurt. That hurt. It was like, oh, no, no. And it seemed like, like watching someone older get hit. Yeah, see, see when Goodman was down on his knees and like, I'm sorry, Grandpa, but you have to give me the key card. Uh, yeah. Like, I was Even like, oh, though, I mean, I'm Goodman is it. not an unintimidating man. Like, he is. He's a big guy. And. Like he, but just because of his age, it's like remember when Arnold got hit in the back by that one. He got drop kick, yeah, yeah, and just came out of nowhere. I'm like, uh, that is a senior citizen that you just 
kicked, not the Terminator. <laughs> yeah. And Arnold, to his credit, like, bless him, just immediately sort of shrugged it off and went, oh, someone tried to kick me? I, I thought it was like a, it was like a yeah, fly or something. Because Arnold's like the greatest dude of all time. But yeah. it, it, it's hard to watch. You know? it's not, I saw it, it happen it, once and I just went, I never want to see that again. I don't like watching yeah, it's that not, kind of abuse. Where are we? <laughs> okay. So, uh, so Scotty takes up at gunpoint, and you know it, is, it feels nice when Gideon sees the van, and he because because you know, obviously he breaks the van out because he goes to get his van back first, and that's where Keith is uh, watching on uh, from the side. Um, what does he says? He says he has like one little line. That he says when the van something comes about out. like ha car brakes. Yeah, <laughs> I think he thinks the the van just drove off on its own because the brakes failed. He believes in demons, so maybe he just thinks a demon took over. It's like oh, it's a demonic van. Mm. That could it's be it. Like, yeah, he's he's been looking at that fidget spinner too long. He's become entranced. It'd be so funny if he pulled it out of his pocket. <laughs> That's his dirty little secret. He's been playing with a fidget spinner. <laughs> yeah. Was he? Oh, he was just carrying trash. Yeah, he just took trash out. Um, I think there's there's been an interesting <clears throat> theme with Keith where he's always eating something kind of phallic. <laughs> I wonder like what they could be suggesting by that. That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> when they show him but uh, yeah I guess he wasn't eating anything in this scene he was just carrying trash out oh, that's just like a good know. running gag what could that mean <laughs> that's like a good running gag she'd always have like a banana or like a sausage at the end of the show just to, just to eat at the end just keep it a running joke <laughs> <laughs> oh dear yeah, I love Keith Keith's great Actually, just even the three seconds that we got of him in this episode were great. Yes, and for for the record, now when when a man's junk is slightly sneaking out of his underwear, that is now for and forever shall be referred to as keeping it. Keeping. <laughs> just a tip. <laughs> or, just a tip poking out. Not just a tip. <laughs> obviously, this the side of a of a certain sack, perhaps as well, which is the first oh, time right. we saw it. Yeah. yeah, either one is keeping it. <laughs> keeps the best <laughs> no but anyway so i was saying that gideon actually feels kind of like no he really cares about fighting back because he grabs a baseball bat and he's ready to go and like help his father but of course scott he's got a gun he can't really do anything about it they go eli and then he takes them to the vault at the church and makes them fill bags and bags of money and you know gideon and scott don't really get a chance to really talk about anything but they're left the end of the episode is them sitting there tied up back to back as scotty leaves so i feel like you know <sighs> The betrayal of Gideon and the fallout of that is really going to hit his next episode where they're in that I vault think so together. Too. Yeah. Um, I don't want to make any bold predictions, but I almost think it'd be cool if they're actually in that vault the whole episode. Like, the others don't know where they are and they're looking for them. And, like, we just have them having this conversation throughout the whole episode. Uh, no. I... Did you watch that coming up next time? I didn't. So you probably know that it's not that. But sure, fair. Well, I don't know <clears throat> at what point they find them, but I know it, like, sure. the... the trailer for the next one opened up with them being rescued and it seems like there's going to be a lot of confessions cool. going on in the next episode. Well it's episode. interesting that this was the, the third last episode and we got an episode of confessions and then presumably an episode of actually like you know fighting Scotty and like getting the money back or mm -hmm. or, or whatever we're doing. Uh, Do you think Judy has a stash still? Uh, She's yeah. been stashing money. Yeah probably probably uh well, where else are you getting all the money for those uh those women panties with the the string that goes up your crack? Yeah, how how much money do you think those are? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but she has to do it in secret. You see, she can't she can't let her dad know she's buying those. Oh uh, yeah, you're right. Also, I love I, lo I just because even t we sort of glossed over it because we went to the rest of the joke with the I have tits and whatnot. But can I just say how much I love that she thinks regular women panties are g strings? Like that's the no that's the default one. That's the normal one. <laughs> That's a grown up panties are. Yeah. I can confirm at least I am not wearing a G string at this moment in time, just for the record. Just if anyone if anyone was concerned. Noted. Sorry, fans. <laughs> uh and Keith can't wear a G string because Keith Keith can't keep it in at tucked in even in a regular pair of boxer shorts. Never mind. No, he's going commando. <laughs> I think we all know this. Under where's the devil? That's what that's what Kelvin's been telling him. Under where's the devil? He can't wear. He can't. He can't. He can't wear underwear. You think Kelvin's just keeping him around for eye candy? <laughs> you say you say candy. I, I think it's more of a a, a low hanging fruit. Yeah. Because I mean, obviously, Kelvin cannot be gay. 
because <clears throat> that lifestyle wouldn't allow it. Although Jesse and Amber were were pretty excited almost to have a gay. Yeah, friend. They, they they were they were quite accepting of Gideon actually, all things considered. So uh, mm-hmm. maybe maybe they'd accept Kelvin. I don't know. Maybe they already have. Though we don't know. We don't know. Their relationship is ambiguous. <laughs> I mean, we've, done, we've, done, we've actually finished the episode. We've done talking about all the plot. We, we can wrap up now. Uh, it was a good episode, though. I mean, to, to sum it up. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm pumped for how this this season wraps up. Mm-hmm. If it's, I will say, um, if it's anything like Vice Principals, which didn't get renewed, I think, until a couple of episodes into the first season. Mm. Uh, the la- the first season ended on a, a major cliffhanger. Yeah, I mean, a lot of TV shows on networks and cable shows kind of just assume, they, they kind of operate under the assumption that they're going to get to continue. Um, mm-hmm. Even if it ends up being, if they get cancelled, it's a really bad ending, but they, they kind of like to risk it, at least in the first couple of seasons. But uh, luckily it's been renewed, so we don't have to worry about it. We know it's been renewed, yeah. But it does mean we're going to have to wait a year, maybe more, because <laughs> it's HBO and they don't always stick to the year. Yeah, but luckily we have other HBO shows starting, like right after, that we can switch on to and then keep going. We'll just have HBO all year round, it's fine. It, it's true. Fine. They have not They have not let up this year. Yeah, we're moving on to Watchmen after this. Who watches The Watchmen? Mm-hmm. Who watches Keith? <laughs> I think we already know that answer. Okay, Kelvin. Ke- Kelvin watches Keith. You're right. You're right. Oh, dear. I love the idea of dropping Judy and the way she speaks into, like, a different show. Like, just drop her into the middle of, like, like something Gosh, really so great. serious. I know. Like, I don't know. Our boys? Yeah, like, drop her in the middle of Our Boys and just have her say, I have tits and I do sex, like, to, to like, Hussein. Like, that would be a hell of a, hell of a moment. Uh, but this has been a very good episode. Uh, this has been episode seven. We got two left because it's a nine-episode season. I think that's because the first one counted as a double, so technically it was ten in the production like order. But um, I think that's mm-hmm. why we're, we're, we've got a nine-episode season. I assume next season will be ten. But uh, that's been episode seven. So let us know what you thought of this one in the comments below. You can like and subscribe, all that stuff. You can get us on the twitters at mail underscore fuzz for channel updates. If you want to support us, you can rate the audio podcast uh, on your podcast app. Apple Podcasts being the most common gives a five star rating, nice little review, helps more people find us, uh, share out the YouTube video, whatever. Uh, all these things do help. You can of course help directly financially. How can they do that, Tara? Put the collection plate you around. Check out- oh, you can check out our Patreon page. It's patreon.com slash Malfuzz TV. You could donate as little as a dollar per month, and that dollar gets you a bunch of bonus material, including additional episodes of The Ace, The Atomic Cinema Experiment, which is where we do our science fiction movie show. Um, so if you're into uh, <laughs> science fiction, it has nothing to do with this show that we're watching, <laughs> reviewing. <laughs> if you're excited about The Watchmen, maybe check out The Ace. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we, so it's going to be us reviewing Watchmen. We're going to be doing that as a pair, so you can look forward to that um, mm-hmm. in a few weeks' time. But I think it's literally the week after this ends, right? Because this ends... Yeah, well, this, this will end on the 13th of October, presumably. Oh. I would assume. Yeah, that sounds right, yeah. Two more episodes, 13th, and then 20th Watchmen. That makes sense. Um... So yeah, uh, do you know what? I wasn't even paying attention. I'm so, I trust you so much to do to the Patreon plug that I was just kind of thinking about things in the middle. I wasn't even listening to you, and then I came back in at your weird sci-fi stutter. Where you <laughs> still though, still though, solid down, solid down. Uh, but that has been us. Uh, of course, check out all the content we have. Uh, Tara mentioned the Ace, the sci-fi movie podcast. Check out the little TV reviews we're doing. We've got our boys from HBO. Me and Connor have been doing the Deuce from HBO. Uh, and we got some more Netflix shows starting up. We're trying Raising Dion this coming Friday. So check out that too. Uh, but that is us. So thank you once again for watching or listening. We always appreciate it. Keep watching TV, guys. Have you got any vanilla? <laughs>